Welcome to the show, guys. This is Andre with Yup, I Said It. Please like, share, and subscribe. Go ahead and hit the bell notification so that you get all the updates if you're new to this channel. All right, so I want to talk about Joy Reid and Byron Donalds, who, uh, in my opinion, is a really good congressman, all right? Um, originally from New York, uh, lives in Florida. And I think that Byron Donalds is a very um, positive, a very strong uh, conservative uh, what we would actually want in a congressman, Byron Donalds, is he embodies all of that, really. Um, but more recently here, uh, he's gotten in trouble by the mainstream media uh, for some comments that he made about Jim Crow. Now, I'm going to go ahead and play this and react to it, but I'm going to let you know here what's going on, basically. Uh, so Byron Donalds is accused of using Jim Crow uh, to make a point about, uh, you know, how father, uh, how important it is for uh, young black men and men in, in general or young men uh, to have fathers in the household. Now, I think that most conservatives would understand where he's where he was going with that, what he intended uh, when he made the statement, which is perfectly clear to me. But Joy Reid seems to not really understand what the hell uh, Byron Donalds is talking about. Um, she they're trying to twist it to say that Byron Donalds uh, is trying to say that it was a better time for black people under Jim Crow, which is totally stupid. Uh, nobody would agree to that. And, you know, again, they're just trying to spin this and trying to blow it out of proportion um, so that the people are gaslit and go into a rage about racial discrimination all over again. Some recent comments by Florida Congressman Byron Donalds have been condemned by House Minority Leader Kareem Jeffrey, Hakeem Jeffries, the Congressional Black Caucus, the chairman of the Democratic National Committee, Jamie Harrison, and the president of the NAACP, Derek Johnson, just to name a few. In those comments, at an event designed to help Republican outreach to black voters in Philadelphia early this week, Congressman Donalds made what certainly seemed like positive comments about the Jim Crow era, and he claims his critics are missing the context of what he said. So here's the context. All right. So before I play this, I want you to understand, if you don't understand, uh, I would like you to understand how uh, they're trying to frame this. So basically, like I explained before, uh, you know, basically what they're saying is Byron Donalds is saying that, you know, black people were living great under Jim Crow. <laughs> which is so stupid. That's not what he was saying at all. But in the, one of the toughest times of black history, Byron Donalds is saying through the toughest time, which was Jim Crow, when black people didn't have a lot of rights that they have today, that we made it through because there were more marriages and families sticking together. That should say a lot about marriage. If you're listening and paying attention, you can read in between the lines. Basically, if you're married, it creates a better family structure, even through a hard time where you don't even have that many rights. That's his point. But I'm going to go ahead and react. Let you guys hear. I grew up with my mom. My dad and my mom, things didn't work out. As an adult, I look at my father and I say, bro, I don't know what happened. Well, you my father and I love you. Wow. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. Wow. But I'm gonna tell you this. Coming growing up, the one thing I knew I wanted to do, and this is not about my father, this is about what I wanted to do, is I wanted to be a father to yeah. myself. Wow. All right. All right. And so one of the things that's actually happening in our culture, which you're now starting to see in our politics, is the re in the reinvigoration <laughs> of black families with younger black men and black women. And that is also helping to breed the revival of a black middle class in America. You see, during Jim Crow, during Jim Crow, the black family was together. Right, so he's, he's saying, during Jim Crow, if you can't hear that, during Jim Crow, the black family was together. Why would he say that? Well, the reason why he would say that is again, we didn't have a lot of rights. Black people didn't have a lot of rights, whether you're light skin or dark skin. Okay, because some some people just they just count the light skin people out like we're not black or something. Like we well, got proved that we're black. <laughs> it's funny, but he's trying to say, I, I totally get it. Hey, look, dude, one of the hardest times in history, man. You know, black people stuck together, which all families would through a Great Depression, through a bad economy. When you stick together, my wife and I have been married for many years. 
We stick together through everything. And it, it really does make a difference. Our kids can see that we're working together. They see that I love her. They see that she loves me. It creates a bond, and it's, it's generational. So we create a generational change. My story is similar to Byron Donald's, so I can definitely understand exactly what he's talking about. Just listening to it one time. The, why Joy Reid can't get that? <sighs> she doesn't want to get it, okay? It, it doesn't fit her narrative. That black people are treated unfairly still. Even as billionaires, it's it's crazy. During Jim Crow, more black people were not just conservative. Because black people always have been conservative-minded, but more black people voted conservatively. And then H E W, Lyndon Johnson, and then you go down that road, and now we are where we are. What's happened in America the last ten years? And I say because it, it's my contemporaries, it's Wesley's contemporaries. You're starting to see more black people be married in homes, raising kids. It's when you home with your wife raising your kids, and then you look at the world, you're saying, now wait a minute, time out. This does not look right. How can I get something to my kids? It goes back to the conversation of generational wealth. I'm just having a job. Generational wealth. So his whole conversation is about family structure, generational wealth. Uh, this is, this is, I mean, you know, every, every black man in America should understand that, <laughs> you know, even, even the ones who race hustle, okay, they should understand this. But again, this does not fit Jory Reed's narrative, so she's going to attack him. And I'm going to let you hear the things that she had to say, but it's no way in the world that she doesn't understand what he's saying, okay? It, it just, it, she goes, she's going to make more money off of disagreeing with him instead of commending this young man and saying, hey, look, I understand that you want to make generational wealth. But she's going to nail the fact that he said Jim Crow. Oh, my goodness. This is when everything hit the fan as soon as he mentioned Jim Crow. But the point is, again, under one of the hardest times in our black history, when families were together, they did extremely well, better under a hard circumstance. Imagine what they could do under a not so hard circumstance. But they'll never let you forget about the hard circumstances of our slavery and our history of slavery. It's crazy. Now by Florida Republican Congressman Byron Donald. Congressman, thank you for being here. Um, we played that lengthy segment. That is what you posted on your social media. The part of uh, what you said that people take issue with is this line, which I'm going to read back to you again. You see during Jim Crow, during Jim Crow, the black family was together. During Jim Crow, more black people were not just conservative. Black people have always been conservative minded, but black people voted conservatively. Um, but it is that during Jim Crow, the black family was together. That's what people have take issue with. Take an issue with what are they missing uh frankly what's really happened is is that you have uh you know democrats and you have the biden campaign and some of the media want to twist my words for political purposes the overarching issue is talking just about black families and why you're seeing a trend of black people leaning towards Republicans in this election cycle and probably in election cycles to, to come. And part of that, in part, is that when you're raising families, raising kids, et cetera, you're now thinking about all of the public policy issues, all of the economic issues, all of the education issues. And that's leading people to have divergence in political thoughts. That was the only point. The stuff that comes up about Jim Crow and twisting my words, saying I was being nostalgic or saying that Jim Crow was good for black people, that's all political spin. It's a lie. It's gaslighting. And that's truly unfortunate. Bingo. It really is unfortunate because where could we get if we just actually focus on what he just now said? All right. The financial issues, uh, uh, financial problems that we're facing right now when you uh, consider having a family. When you're a father taking care of many children like myself, uh, you know, is that not important? Or should we just talk about Jim Crow? See, it's never about what's going on with the people on the left, uh, on the left, in the mainstream media. It's never really about what's happening in your family. How, how is this? How are the way things are going, how does that affect you in your finances? Or how does that affect you in your family? The things that you're seeing, how does that, how's that, uh, how's that make you feel? You know, it's, not, it's never about any of that. It's just all about basically, uh, you know, skin color uh, and, and what we went through in the past. And we got to hold on to that because apparently that's how some people still are getting paid. But your average black guy, we're not thinking about any of that. Literally, we want to take care of our family right now. We're not living in the past like you guys. 
All right. And I'm talking to a certain crowd of people. They know who they are. We're not living in the past. Uh, we don't we don't make decisions based on skin color. I tell people this all the time. Uh, stop doing that. It's, it's really stupid because uh, this is the way they're going to treat you. And you'll never get anywhere. You'll never get anywhere walking around thinking everybody hates you because of your skin color and, and building up racial attentions here. That's the last thing we need in our country. We actually need to be together. Divided, we fall. So here's the challenge, Congressman. You started out talking about your family, talking about your mom, talking about being raised, and you on your own brought up Jim Crow. In fact, you said Jim Crow three times for emphasis. It wasn't the media. I mean, is he not allowed to say Jim Crow or something? I was, I was like trigger words for these people. Like if you say Jim Crow or slavery, oh my goodness, like they just, it, it doesn't matter what you say. After that, it's going to, the whole conversation will be about race. That's it. Like, you have to have some spiritual and moral baselines here. Like, do you, it, it, it's got to be about more than that for you, okay? Don't let these people dictate uh, your decision-making come November 5th, okay? Uh, you make your own decisions based on what's happening in your finances, what's happening, how hard it is for your family to survive. Could Joey Reid, she's making plenty of money. All right, talking about stupid stuff like this or the Democrats or gaslighters who brought up Jim Crow, it was you. You brought up Jim Crow. So why did you use Jim Crow specifically as your reference? You did that. No one else did that. You did it. Oh, I did. We were having a conversation just talking as, you know, black people in Philadelphia. But if you're going to use the, 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 the chronological timeline of America before the Great Society and Lyndon Johnson's uh, mm -hmm. time period you had unfortunately the Jim Crow era in America during that time period the marriage rates of black Americans was significantly higher than any other time since then in America which is very fascinating that the marriage rates were higher during that point so again if you can make it through Jim Crow being married and, and this is one of the hardest times for black America and they were very unfortunate nobody's denying that how could anybody deny that but if you can make it through those hard times at that point with those laws set in place where we didn't have rights, how great could it be when you're married in a good economy? Trump 2024, man. American history. So it is a divergence if you're talking about marriage rates in the black community. They have plummeted. And what we've seen. By the way, I'm always drinking like sodas or something, guys. I don't drink a lot of sugar. I drink like some energy drinks. Just to let you know, I don't drink alcohol. <laughs> I try not to curse at all, uh, but I won't curse on my channel. But you know, I just you know, I don't want people to think that I'm sitting here drinking beers or something, getting drunk on YouTube. <laughs> I'm just not doing that. I'm just letting you know. Recently in America, which is a very good thing, we should all celebrate, is that ma the marriage rates in the black community are rising again. That's good for black families. That's definitely good it's for black excellent. children. It's something I want to see. I'm quite sure you want to see yes. it as well. I want to see more of that too. Uh, my parents never were married, okay? Some of you are very fortunate, and that's great. We love you. Uh, but my parents were never married. They couldn't even be in the same room together uh, without cussing each other and yelling at each other. I, I mean, but when when you have uh, family, a family structure set up, it's a beautiful thing. It is literally the way God intended it to be. Why? Because it makes sense. It, it works. His, his, his way works always. Yah's way works always. So uh, any any argument against that or not highlighting that when that was his main point, it's just absolutely retarded. OK, let's talk about that. Uh, Jim Crow uh, lasted roughly from 1867 after the Civil War to 1968. Is there a specific period between 1867 and 1968 that you thought was this golden era for black families or a time that was good for black families? Joy, I never said that. And see, this is where the gaslighting comes in. No, no, I'm going to read in. what you said. All no, I was no, talking no, about on. was the marriage. Stop. So she's trying to gotcha. You know, this is this is like, hey, look, I got you trapped now. No, it, it, that's not what he's saying. And she knows that, okay? She knows that, but she's got to race hustle, man. She's got to race hustle. Somehow, someway, she's got to stick to that Jim Crow. Just nail him with the Jim Crow stuff. Because apparently Byron Donalds is some kind of racist black man. Like, <laughs> it's... Like, think about this. Like, you know, it's crazy. Like, it doesn't make any sense, man. This is why we can't get anywhere because people are all up in their feelings. 
and they can't they can't talk about regular things. They can't they, they can no longer do that. These people are way too elite. Okay, and, and they they just don't they're not honest with the with the public. All right, we don't have real journalism at all. Okay, that's why you know I don't I commend Byron Donalds for going on these uh, shows uh, on 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 the enemy's turf and uh, you know keeping us calm. I just I admire I admire that, but we all know the fight that we're up against. They're not going to let us have it easy. They're not going to leave us alone uh, unless we fight a little bit. All right, but we have to fight the right way. Of course, I don't mean violence. All right, uh, but I know exactly what he's saying, and, and the audience, my audience, would know exactly what he's talking about. And folks, this is why we have, um, you know, so many YouTubers coming out of the woodworks because we have fake media. It's just all fake and we never get anywhere. We're going to go back and forth arguing with these people about silly things when we don't have time for that. All right. We just don't have time for it. Our generation does not want to battle with the mainstream media, but we will. All right, just to get the truth out, just so people understand, uh, you know, what's really happening here. Like, we're supposed to just close our eyes and say, you know, we, we don't really see the economy getting worse. We don't. We're going to fight, okay? We're going to fight about what's happening right now because I don't know how many people out there have children, but I do. And, and I believe that their futures are important because we don't know how long we're going to be here. All right, we just don't know that. But the mainstream media, they will lie all the time. They're not going to tell the truth. So we're going to have to fight these people. Uh, at every turn, every turn, uh, and we got to stay ahead of the game. Uh, but I wanted to defend Byron Donalds because I understand totally what he's saying. As I said before, I totally get it, and I'm pretty sure most Americans would understand what he's talking about. The black community, the, the last thing we need is somebody talking about race right now in the black community, getting them, uh, you know, all riled up about race and, and 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 their skin color, and telling them like Joe Biden said when he went to Morehouse, uh, telling these kids that you know they're, they're getting killed in the streets by police officers, and the white people don't like them, and white supremacy is the problem. No, it's not. Black on black crime is such a bigger problem than white supremacy. Okay, the systematic racism is black on black crime. That's what's really going on. That none of these people would like to talk about. Instead, hyper focused. Literally, every episode that I watch of Joy Reid, hyper focused on how brown we are, uh, how disadvantaged we are, how bad we should feel about our skin color. And how bad slavery was. And, and all this stuff that really doesn't matter and it's not going to help us advance further. It's just not going to help. It's been proven. It's not going to help. Uh, would, would actually help if we report on some black on black crime, start getting these uh, inner city neighborhoods in order by locking up some of these criminals who are shooting children. How about we start there? Nobody wants to talk about it. Okay, I, I literally talk to people all the time who are in denial about this. They don't think that the black on black crime is that uh, out of control. Like you must didn't grow up in the hood, okay? You must, you you don't know what you're talking about. I'm telling you, it's it's that bad, okay? Uh, look at the look at on FBI's website. Look on the look on look on some of these websites of the uh, local uh, uh, local police departments. Let's look at the crime rate. Let's look at what's happening here, uh, and we'll, we can compare the numbers because the the in, the information is absolutely public and it's there. So if you want to do your research, you can find all this out. We make up a small percentage of the population, something like 13 to 14 percent of black Americans, and we do over a half of the crimes in the United States of America. How does that make any sense? But somehow we need to be talking about our skin color all the time. You know, it ain't got nothing to do with anything. It's got everything to do with how you're raised, what kind of father do you have, if you have one in the house, uh, and if your parents are married. It, it does have a lot to do with it, you know. So I'm not believing in any of the mainstream media lies. We're going to stop uh, listening to these people after a while because they're going to be irrelevant. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Please like, share, and subscribe. Go ahead and uh, leave a comment as well. Let me know what you feel about this, what you think about it. Don't be afraid. Go ahead and talk.